for blessing us and honouring us. And we ask, Father God, that you pour out your spirit upon us tonight and cleanse us with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus, and remove anything that is not of you from our midst. We particularly ask, Lord, that you send out your spirit of anointing upon your Son, your beloved, Brother Johnson, that his words, his heart, his whole spirit be yours. So that when he ministered to us tonight, we will be blessed by you. And so, Father God, as we again come into your presence, we'd like to introduce a song which I hope most of you all know is Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. <laughs> We are in your presence, fill us with your power, in this time of need. Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence, fill us with your power. You're the living water, from mountain, comfort and counselor, comfort and counselor. Take, complete control. take complete control, welcome Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Fill inside of me. Fill us with your power. Fill inside of me. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just close our eyes for a moment? Lord Father, it's such a great joy to be here and we start a mission in Sydney. This evening you have gathered us over here, Lord, to reveal to us the truth. A truth that sets us free. Lord, we have come here not only to receive the knowledge, the understanding, but through the truth, have an intimate relationship with you. So this evening, as you speak to us, O Lord, minister to each one of us, O Holy Spirit, and open our eyes, our minds, that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. So speak to us as we open our hearts to you. Make this preaching and teaching absolutely easy to understand. And Lord, we thank you that you are the God who not only teaches us, but you are the living God who confirms the word that is being preached with accompanying signs and wonders. We thank you, we praise you in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. So first of all, I want to thank you for coming. <coughs> Praise God. And tonight we are going to study a very powerful uh, topic called the law of faith. The law of faith. Why is it called as a law? Have you heard the law of gravity? Yes. Hello? Yes, yes. yes. So what is gravity? Oh, uh, sorry, what is law? The rule. Rule. What else? It's the principle. Principle. What else? Now, now we came by car, and my brother Francis was driving. Okay. From the time we started from home, he was only his hand was on the steering. 
But when he came here, all of a sudden, there was a small stick at the side and began to shake. And for the first time, I saw the car which was going straight began to go with us. <laughs> he did something with that stick on his left side and the car went reverse. Can you believe that? His car went reverse. Hello? Yes. Instead of going in front, it went reverse. Yes. Why did it go reverse? Because he changed the gear. The gear. Yeah. So in the car there is a law. When you put it on drive, you the car doesn't go reverse, but it goes forward. How do you, what would you say to a person who doesn't understand about the gears, puts a reverse gear, then starts praying Psalm 91, and then starts praying the Divine Mercy, and then finishes the rosary, and says, Lord, I'm ready to move. And praise God, looks in front, and says, Lord, you are my protector, direct my path, and presses the accelerator, which side will the car go? Reverse. But he said, Psalm 91. <laughs> he prayed the divine mercy. He even prayed the blood of Jesus on the car. Will the car still go reverse? Why? That's a law. It's a law. Yeah. So when the person has put a reverse case, it has to go reverse. So what's a law? A law is a principle that anyone who activates it, the result is Can't the same. And today, I want to tell you that the Word of God is a spiritual law. And because it's a spiritual law, you can predict before the manifestation that the result will always be the same. See. So there is a law of faith and there is a law of fear. You and I have been given the freedom of choice which law to activate. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many of you have ever heard the word faith before? No yes. one. Please God. Have you heard the word faith before? Yes. yes. So, has Jesus ever said, I heal you? No. No. He always said, your faith, faith as he see tonight we are not only really going to study the law of faith but understanding the law of faith we will see amazing miracles happening in our lives okay. yes i'm not here to heal people sorry i'm here to teach you how you can operate on the law of faith and then you yourself can touch one another and heal the sick. Amen. Is it a fair deal? Yes. yes. So there is going to be the truth. Yes. And after the truth is explained, the Holy Spirit will manifest His glory in our midst. And you will see healing taking place so quickly without sweating. If the healing takes place in the body, a physical healing, can I use the same law in my finances? Yes. 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 Can I use the same law in my marriage? Yes. Can I use the same law with my children? Yes. Can I use the same law in the area of sin? Yes. Because yes. it works the same. If a person has learned to drive a Toyota, can he draw, drive another car? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 So I'm here to show you how to drive your life into victory. Amen. 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 So now Jesus never said, I hear you. He always said, Your faith. What? Faith. Faith has healed you. Okay. Now when he said, Your faith has healed you, every person sitting here will say, I have faith. But then comes the question if I have faith, then how come so many years have gone by and I did not experience which in my life? There has to be something that is going wrong. Amen? Amen. So when you find out, am I on the right journey 
or am I on the wrong side? Okay, let's study about pay. Let's say, supposing you had ten dollars and there was a poor man and you are filled with compassion for the poor man and you made a decision let me help this man and therefore you spend seven dollars on this man you had ten you spent seven dollars on this man how many dollars would you have how many of you say three you have your hands up what about the others come on let's can we, can we, can we see if you don't cooperate let's close down can we cooperate? Yes. yes. Are we all learning? Yes. 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 So, how many of you say three? Lift your hands up. Good. Now, how many of you say not three? Lift your hands up. Okay, these people have not gone to school. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they teach their children. Please are you also. Jerry, what is your mom teaching? Okay. Now she lifted her hands up and said it's not three. Now some of you are surprised. Why is she saying it's not three? Now I want you to open your Bible to Luke chapter 6 and verse number 38. Luke chapter 6 and verse number 38. Can somebody read it for me? Yes, read it. Give. Give. And it will be given to you. Give and it will be given to you. Oh yeah. Give. It did he say take? No. These are whose words? Jesus', Jesus words. words. And he said, give and it shall be given to you. Yes. A good measure. A good measure. Pressed down. Pressed down. Shaken together. Shaken together. Running over. Running over. Will be put into your lap will be put into your lap for the measure you give for the measure you give will be the measure you get back will be the measure you get back so according to Jesus' words when you go and help somebody in his name is it subtraction or multiplication? multiplication multiplication so he said when you give you will get a hundredfold so I have seven dollars that I spent <laughs> Then how many should I have? Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Yep. Now the question comes, do I believe the three dollar or seven hundred dollar? The person who believes three dollar, he can be a Christian but still live a defeated life. And a person who believes the seven hundred dollars is the person who is a Christian by the word of God and lives a supernatural life. Now what is the difference between 3 and 700? 3 dollar is what I see. 3 dollar is what I learned. 3 dollar is what is left in my hand. 3 dollar is what I can use. 700 dollars I cannot see. There is no physical evidence. But yet the person says, Lord Jesus, because you say so, I choose to believe not on sense knowledge but on your work and such a person lives a victorious life, a supernatural life. My brother Gerard was saying that I am not making any collection, it is free. Is that right? Did he say that? Yes. I hope you will also see the series are given, the books are given and everything is given free. Plus there is no collection. Why do you think I am saying I do not want any collection? Because I choose to believe for the last 21 years what Jesus said. And for the last 21 years believing in what Jesus said, I have been living and experiencing the manifestation of supernatural glory of God through the Holy Spirit. Never experienced a single day broken in my life. Now the question comes, as a Christian, 
Do I agree with what she has said or do I agree with the, what the world is teaching? The world teaches me when I have spent money, it is subtraction. Is that right? Yes. yes. And Jesus teaches me when I spend money, it's multiplication. Which one do I believe? I don't know. You know, in your own personal life. That's why when a person is saying, I have faith in God, he is saying, I'm not making decisions based on what I see, what I hear, what I feel, what I touch, what I taste. My decisions are based on what Jesus says in his word. So now where's the battle? Is the battle of the devil or is the battle of my own mind? Mind. 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 So who decides my victory and who decides my defeat? Me. Does the devil decide? No. God decides? No. I decide what I choose to believe and that's what breaks forth the supernatural result. So when every time Jesus said, your faith has healed you, what did he mean? Did he mean the self-knowledge or did he mean the knowledge of his word? The knowledge of this word. That's why you find Jesus in every place. He was teaching, he was preaching, and then he was healing. Amen. But you find Jesus in his own country, he was preaching, he was teaching, but he could not heal. Why? Lack of faith. Because those people I mean. were not listening to what he was saying. Those people were on their sense knowledge saying, is he not the carpenter's son? Is he not the son of Mary? Or was, were they listening to what he was teaching? So my question to you is, might be you are praying for 10 hours a day, but the question still is the same. The 10 hours you prayed, did you believe on the word knowledge or the sense knowledge? If you want a pen and a paper, write down this. Prayer does not make faith work. What? Prayer does not make faith prayer work. Faith work. Prayer does not make faith work. But faith makes prayer work. Faith makes prayer, prayer work. Now, now, in our life, in our life, have you ever prayed with worry? Yes. So when a person is worried, is that person on word knowledge or sense knowledge? Sense knowledge. Sense knowledge. Sense knowledge. And as long as the person is on sense knowledge, will that person experience anything supernatural? No. No, no because he's on natural human faith. And to operate on sense knowledge faith, you don't have to believe in Jesus. A person who is not believing in Jesus also gives you the same answer. Hello? Yep. You go and ask a person who is not a Christian. You had ten dollars and you spent seven dollars on a poor man. How many do you have? They say three. But what will a Christian say? The Christian will say, listen, the world is teaching me to you, but Jesus is teaching. I choose to believe on Jesus. So is faith a spiritual law? Yes. So when a person is operating on this spiritual law, will he always get the same result? Yes. yes. So are we operating on the spiritual law called faith or on the natural law called sense? Okay, I'll say this. Has anybody, while you were sitting in the car, your car took off? <laughs> no. No, no. When I was coming in the car, we were in some place where there was no traffic. It looked like I was on the runway. <laughs> and my brother Francis was going at around 80. But the car did not take off. But this morning when I was coming from Adelaide to Sydney, you won't believe we were about 200 passengers 
in that plane with luggage and the plane took off. <laughs> Which one is heavy? Car or plane? Plane. Plane. And it's still too far. How come the plane flies and the car doesn't fly? Different law. Hmm? You mean to say the car has got more law of gravity? Sorry? Aerodynamics. Can you explain to me? Okay, I'll explain to you. Have you ever seen on TV in a news channel storm in some place? The wind is blowing and the houses and the cars are flying. Have you seen that? Yes. The same concept takes place on the runway. When the, when the plane comes on the runway, the pilot takes the plane at around 350 to 400 kilometers per hour. So when he's going at that speed, the air becomes a storm on the wings. And it is that air pressure that lifts the plane up. The same plane and the pilot goes at 100 speed, will the plane take off? No. He has to go against that air which becomes strong. And to do that, he has to fire the engine. In the same way, a man of God has to go against his self-knowledge and fire his engine, call the word of God, believe in his heart, and speaking out of his mouth. Now, his journey is no longer natural, it is supernatural. So a person can be in the church for the last 20 years and still live a broken, defeated life. And a person can be just converted, getting rooted in the word of God and build his house on the rock. And that's what Jesus said. The one who built the house on the rock is the one who lives by the word of God. The storm came, the wind came, the flood came and beat on the house and the house should stay. Is that right? Hello, is that right? Yes. Mm. Now, if you have to check your own life, this morning till this evening, we, you must have said a thousand words. Out of those thousand words, how many words were physical evidence and how many words were word evidence? And as long as your life is governed by physical evidence, my friend, you are still living a defeated life. So, has God given you the power to go into the supernatural? Oh yeah? Are we all baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes. But will the Holy Spirit work in everybody's life? No. For the Holy Spirit to work in a life, He needs my faith. And what faith? That I must rely on God's word. So the Holy Spirit is there to help me to understand the word and believe in that word and operate on that word and now the person is living in the supernatural. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise and, and, and as we understand <coughs> this concept I'm going to call people out. And I'm also going to call people who have never prayed in their life. And I'm going to tell them, now you do this and watch what happens. The person instantly gets healed. If the person can get healed in his physical body, can the same concept work in his relationship? Yes. yes. In his finances? Yes. yes. In everything? Yes. yes. In the last 21 years, I've seen it work in my finances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can live my life on sense knowledge and ex experience extreme brokenness in my finance. And I can live on the word of God and experience all the things we If I have to say we are three real, in one year in Sri Lanka, we have about 280 boys. Another one we have about 80 boys. 
and it go up, we have 70 boys. These boys are taken care of and everything is clean. If somebody comes to your house for one week, has your expenses increased? Yes. What about these people? Has the expenses increased? Yes. yes. All the retreats are free. The food is free, the stay is free, everything is free. And when you come to the center, you will never find a box which says donation box. There is a suggestion box, feedback box, and on it is written, no cash please. Why am I so sure? That my bills will be paid. I'm so sure, just because, just as when I put a drive, I have never doubted the car will go reverse. Amen. In the same way, when I'm believing in the word of God and putting it into action and speaking my faith, I know and I know it always has to produce the result. Amen. Amen. Are you, are you following? Yes. yes. So the word of God is, is can be predicted. <coughs> the result can be known before it is manifested. Why? It works the same way. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. <coughs> Do not get wild. We are learning. How many of you have learned cycling? Did you cycle the first day? No. no. Or did you fall? Fall. fall? Did you give up? No. Some of you gave up, but some of you said, if she can do, I can do as well. <laughs> Never give up. After you learned cycling, did you take double seat? Yes. yes. Did you did you cycle with one hand, one hand gone? <laughs> did you cycle with both the hands in you? Come on. Yes. Those who learned swimming the first day, were you on the surface or on the water? Blah, 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 blah. Now, after learning swimming, are you enjoying the water? Yes. In the same way, a person who learns, who learns, say that learns. Learns. Learns, trains, practices, swimming, enjoys the water. Amen. In Amen. the same way, the person who learns, practices, and trains to operate on what kind of faith enjoys every day. The problem is a strategy to learn new strategies to overcome it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So for him, the problem is no problem. Hmm. Because he said, this problem, I can fix it. How? Using faith. faith. So what is the currency in Australia? No, no. Can my rupees work here? No. no. Can your dollars work in my country? No. no. So according to the kingdom, is the currency. Right? Yes. In the same way, the currency of heaven is faith. The currency of the kingdom of darkness is fear. Whatever currency you need is the result what you receive. Yes. So can I blame God? Can I blame the devil? Who is responsible? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Faith is a spiritual law. And what you might be will, uh, you, know, you know, these are truths. Hello, these are truths hidden from the world. And these truths will set us free. So right now, I have, I have what I believe. I have what I believe. In my heart, I have what I believe in my heart and I see. It is very important for me, it is very important for me to understand, to understand the force of faith. Words are the most important, uh, words are the most powerful things, powerful things 
in the universe. Praise God. Okay, let's take an example. Are you ready? Yes. Hello, are you ready? Yes. 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 Now let's see how this spiritual uh, truth works. Let's go to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 and verse number 20. Okay, let's start with 12. Mark 11, 12. 11, 12. And I've got news to tell you. If you are the shelters, you can kill any sickness. Amen. Amen. Do you know why you came here this evening? God wants to make you a killer. Either that cancer will kill you, or you learn to kill cancer. But somebody will be killed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so if somebody says, what do you do every day? I kill and I teach how to kill. I'm a killer. Amen. I'm anointed by God to go and kill. Terminator. <laughs> like you see in the movie. The same. That's what I was talking to Brother Francis and I said. When I pick up my bag, I feel like I'm a soldier on a mission. Open my equipment, load it, and start the walk. And teach the people of God the same application. How many of you uh, knew that they on the mobile used to send SMS? Yes. Yes, yes. But then one day somebody showed you WhatsApp. <laughs> Did you ever go on SMS? <laughs> WhatsApp. Now are you sending SMS or WhatsApp? WhatsApp. <laughs> In the same way our life was of sense knowledge, SMS. <laughs> and tonight God wants to teach you a new system by which you can get result, and that is the law of faith. Amen. I'm going to read a passage. Those who have heard it before, please don't open your mouth. Give others to learn. There is one word that is repeated again and again. And this word is a killer. You have to find out what is that word which is repeated again and again which has been a killer in marriage, killer in body, killer in finances, killer in relationship. He's a killer. Are you ready? Yep. Yes. Hello, are you ready? Yes. 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 And in the morning, when they were come from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree, a far off having leaves, Jesus came to it if he might find anything there on it. When Jesus came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of fix was not yet. And Jesus answered. And Jesus answered and said to it, No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And his disciples heard. Now what is the word that was repeated again and again? A tree or leaf. Uh, do you understand my Indian English? <laughs> Hello? What fruit? Okay. Somebody said fruit. Somebody said leaves. Now I'm going to read it that everybody will get the answer. 
Okay? Everybody will get that. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And seeing the fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came to it. If, I, if we might find anything there on it, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not here. And Jesus answered and said to it, No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. How many of you know it is a killer? It has destroyed so many marriages. It has destroyed so many children. It has destroyed so many finances. What is that it? Fruitlessness. Fruitlessness? No. No. What is it? Okay. Now, now let's, let's go step by step. Okay. Was Jesus hungry? Yes. yes. Did he see a fig tree or any tree? Yes. Which tree? Fig tree. Fig tree. Was it covered with leaves? No. Yes. 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 Did he find any figs? No. Why not? Because there were no figs. Huh? No. It was not, not the season for figs. For figs. Now, would you go to a mango tree when there are no figs uh, for mango? No. Would you go in search of jackfruit yes. when there is, it's not the season for jackfruit? Yes, no. won't go. So you won't go when it is off season. So in other words, you are saying you are smarter than Jesus. Now when he talks to you, 
does he talk to you with verbal human language or does he talk to you without any voice without any voice so when when it talks to you and your mouth is shut tears are rolling down and you are filled with fear has anybody ever had worry yes yes when you are worried who is talking to you it i want to get say i'm going to kill you did you hear what the doctor said it is talking to you yes the doctor said you got only 4 months to live and i'm not only going to kill you i'm going to torture your children as well so jesus is teaching the disciples that it is talking to us and it talks to us using our senses and when this it is talking to you and you keep your mouth shut it will talk to you and talk to you and talk to you so much that the time comes you are depressed you are you are a victim you are talking your failure you are talking of no strength you are weak let me give an example a doctor's report was wrong it got exchanged with somebody in the blood sample and the blood uh, and the report came blood cancer how many times do you think the blood cancer will talk to this person every time so when this blood cancer is talking to him and is keeping his mouth shut after one week what will be the condition of his body from bad to worse bad to worse and that's what jesus is saying when it is talking to you you must learn to answer it now when it spoke to jesus did it speak with verbal voice no but when jesus spoke to it did he speak in his mind or did he open his mouth and speak the word open, open his mouth and speak so when it is talking to you what is talking to you fear is talking to you pain is talking to you hurt is talking to you bitterness is talking to you jealousy is talking to you and all kinds of things are talking to you are you supposed to keep your mouth shut or open your mouth and speak to that it open your mouth and speak to the it now when jesus spoke to that it what did he speak he spoke a negative word to that and he spoke that negative word he spoke it so loud that his disciples heard him speaking the word what do you think was the acting in the minds of the disciples first of all he goes in search of faith in the whole season what happened to jesus today as he got off his mind and now he is not only searching for things now he's talking to the tree now let's see what happened the next day praise god the next day was the matter and in the morning as they passed by who passed by they who are the they the disciples passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the wood what about jesus was jesus even bothered to see the tree for him when he spoke the word that word was enough in his heart that it is finished but when the disciples saw that the fig tree was dried up by its root now what's the tree physical yeah was it a grown up tree yeah can a tree dry up like a sukha bumbil like a dry fish within 24 hours no but did the word make a physical tree dry up like a dry fish within 24 hours yes. yes so when jesus spoke that word did the word go and hit the tree or hit the root root hit the root so when god works something in your life does he start from outside or does he go to the root root so the word of god works on the outside or the word of god goes and attacks the root root when the root is dead is the tree dead yes, yes. so how can you kill every it in your life attack the root by opening your mouth and speaking to the kid the word of god so can the word which is spiritual destroy 
something that is physical. Yes. 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 Do we have evidence of Jesus doing it? Yes. yes. And did Jesus say, the very things that I did, you also will do because you believe in me? Yes. Did he say, because you believe in me, not only what I did, but greater things than that will you do? Yes. yes. So, now there are some ill in your life that is threatening you and you have been keeping your mouth shut and not speaking to that ill, but speaking about the ill to everybody. For example, a person has got diabetes. Does he go around telling everybody, keep me in prayer, I am diabetic. I am a tribe. I am tick tick tick. I'm TikTok tick. Who is giving that names to you? It. The doctors are giving you different names and you accept the name and now you got baptized by it. <laughs> and now that you got that it, you are believing in that it and you are talking about that it. Now when you are believing that it and talking about the it, will it kill you? Yes. yes. Will it torture you? Yes. yes. And have you been practicing this all our life? Yes. Yes. Now, is Jesus saying, when you operate on this law, will you get victory? No. How did Jesus operate when it was speaking? He spoke a negative word to the it and it killed the it. So what are you supposed to speak to your kid? Agree with that kid? Or speak to that kid? The word of God. Speak. How can we have empathy and earthworm? Those who are in India, when it rains, the earthworms come up. Yes. And it might be when you were small, you caught the earthworm. And then somebody showed you. They took a little salt and put it on the earthworm. Has anybody ever seen that? Yes. <laughs> on the earthworm, little salt. What happens to the earthworm? It starts melting and cuts into pieces. In the same way, when it is talking to you, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. When you open your mouth and speak the word of God on that it, it starts melting and starts getting tormented by the words of God coming out of your mouth. Hallelujah. So who is in charge to put the salt? But if you don't put the salt and you're scared of that it, will it destroy you? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then, then Peter calling to remember said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which you cursed, which you cursed, which you cursed, hey, which you cursed, cursed. cursed is with an away. Did Jesus curse the tree? Yes. yes. How do you say that? Did he say Come on. <laughs> Was that a curse? Did Jesus curse the tree? Yes. Yes. What is the meaning of the word curse? Did he speak a negative word to the tree? Yes. yes. So did, was that a curse? Yeah. Yes. Have you been speaking negative words about somebody? Yes. So did you curse that person? Yes. Anybody married? <laughs> Somebody asked, how is your mother-in-law? I'm not answered. You know the answer. How's your husband? Very good, but he is. Is that one a curse? Yes. Oh, yeah. How's your boss? Good, but curse. How is so and so? Good, but curse. So if I plant in curses in people's life, I'm a soul, what will I do? Curse. Will I be in the same proportion or in a high 
level heart. High level High heart. Level. So what's the devil's job? His job is to see to it how he can put some pressure in your mind so that you open your mouth and speak negative about one another. Uh, is it possible for a person to speak negative of somebody in the church? No. <laughs> Can a Christian speak negative about a fellow Christian? Never, please. <laughs> Hello. Possible? Yes. Not exactly. Praise <laughs> God. So, in a day, how many curses are we giving? Uh, are, are we cursing one another? And if you have been cursing, will that curse come into your life in one day? Yes. 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 So Peter is saying, Jesus, the fig tree you cursed has withered away. Now, did Peter say a statement or did he ask Jesus a question? I'll give the dialogue. Master, the other fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Now, was that a question mark or was it a statement? Statement. Not at all. It was a big question mark. That's why the next slide says, Jesus answered. When will a person answer? When there's a question. So what was Peter actually doing? Peter was so taken up by that incident that he was asking Jesus, I heard you speak to the tree and you spoke a negative word to the tree and the tree died from the root. Can you tell me Jesus, how did you do that? And Jesus is giving his disciple, not, not give Peter. Hello, he never spoke to Peter. Peter asked the question, but Jesus is not answering to Peter. If he had to answer to Peter, then this would have been only for the Pope. But Jesus never answered to Peter. He answered to them. I don't know about you, I am in that death. Joel, are you there in the gym then? Yes. What about you, Osh? Yes. yes. Sure? Yes. Ask your neighbor, are you in the dam? Are you are in the dam? Yes. yes. Of course. You, you, you've got to be sure. Because if you're not sure that you are in the dam, you will never use the authority. Hello, unless you know who you are, can you use the authority? No. So Jesus said to, Jesus answering, said to them, Jesus answering, said to them, what's the first thing he said? Have faith in God. He said, have faith in God, or he, can, he also said, have faith of God. Now he's going to teach us how does the spiritual law operates where you can operate under the law of faith of God. Do you want to operate on the faith of God? Yes. Yes. Oh. yes. It looks like I, 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 you know, the children, they don't want to eat and then they... <laughs> <laughs> the mom asked you know, the children, I said, no, I don't want to eat. Well, come on, open your mouth. <laughs> come on, do you want to understand and practically use yes. every day yes. the faith of God? Yes. 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 Come on, yes or no? Yes. Come on, yes or no? Yes. Do you know when you sit down there and you don't respond, heaven is watching you? Yes. yes. I'll prove to you. I'll prove to you. Let, let's go to Exodus chapter 3. Because please remember, when you come to a class like this, uh, you know, uh, you should know what is actually happening in the spiritual realm. Because if you don't know, uh, you will go back home with nothing. Now watch this. Um, this is the truth that God wants to teach us. And this is where people are experiencing the manifestation and people don't experience anything in spite of coming to church. Watch this. Let's take an example of Moses. Was Moses a great man of God? Yes. yes. Now let's see, how did he get anointed? And if he got anointed, and the Spirit of God is teaching us through the Word of God how he got anointed, then you and I also can get the same fire. Yes. And if we don't do what he did, then we can go back home the same. Exodus chapter 3, 
was one. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. The priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Har. Now, was Moses raised in Pharaoh's house? Yes. yes. Was he a prince? Yes. yes. Was he a prince in the palace? Yes. 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 For 40 years? Yes. Did he commit a murder? Yes. Was it by error? Yes. Did he have to run for his life? Yes. yes. Did he run in the desert? Yes. Did he run away from Pharaoh? Yes. Did he get connected to Jethro? Yeah. Now, when he met Jethro, did he ask Jethro for a job? Mm. See, listen, you can be a prince in Egypt, but the moment your location has changed, your prince is no more prince. Yeah. He needs to survive in the desert. And that's when Moses is asking for help. And Jethro gives him a help and says, you can work for me. Mm. And what kind of job has Jethro given to Moses Shepherd. to look after his Shepherd. sheep? Shepherd. Have you ever seen a sheep, snow white sheep, so beautiful sheep, so soft sheep? <laughs> Have you ever seen a sheep, a sheep yes. so nice? <laughs> when the group of sheep or herd of sheep is passing by, all that you can smell is shit. Has <laughs> anybody ever had an experience in India? Yes. Now, what was Moses doing? The prince of Egypt doing? Cleaning them of their shit for how many years? 40 years. Imagine a person getting that job. And that job he was doing for 40 years with no future. Do you understand what it means to be 40 years working when he was a prince in Egypt? Oh, do you think he must be reconnecting those days when he would be in the swimming pool and three girls beside three girls and putting grapes in his mouth? Were they not these people? Come on, I have seen it in movies, I don't know. <laughs> Haven't you seen that scene? Yes. Yes. The servants <laughs> all looking, taking care of him, and now he is taking care of the sheep. My friend, you might say that was the most miserable moment in Moses' life. Moses did not know that God had a purpose put in there because all those things that are to be negative are actually God teaching you, training you and giving you practice for the future. None of your negative things ever go wasted. God was actually training Moses using the sheep so that he would be a champion in the desert that when he would bring the people out of Israel, out of Egypt, he was a trained champion how to find water, how to find shelter. Because he has been in the desert for 40 years. My friend, if you are going through some negativity in your life, remember, you are called to be a leader. A leader has to be trained with all kinds of negativity. And in that negativity, all that God is training you is to rely on his word knowledge. So that when the training is over, he said, come on leader, now let's go and get the captives out of their bondage. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of them are saying, oh yeah, praise God. Thank you Jesus, I'm going through some negativity. That means I know I'm going through some training in the future. I'm going to bring the captives out of their captivity. And Lord, I am all excited now to go through this negativity because you're going to teach me how to be an overcomer. I used to be a victim, but not anymore. I am victorious in Jesus' name. I'm more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. Those were the days of crime. Those were the days of depression. But now, when my Lord, the champion, is teaching me to work and walk by not sense knowledge, word knowledge, I am also called to be a champion.
And they always have seminars how to catch the fish. <laughs> <laughs> they have got annual retreats. How to go fishing. That's why Jesus chose them. <laughs> Amen. You know, said, Lord, of all the world, why did you choose the fishing? They said, you know why? Because they are courageous. They got the guts. They don't even know whether they're coming back. They can't see the fish, but they take their men, no training, experience, rely, rely totally on God and stepping out in faith in the deep ocean to cast that net and bring that fish. Do they have the guts? Yes. My question to you, if the ship turns, will they ever be able to swim back? No. They know they are dead. But do they yet go? Yes. So are they going from a comfortable zone to an uncomfortable zone? Yes. When God sees that, He says, Come on, I've got a job for you. And those who are all the time on the shore and saying, I want fish, I'm going fishing, I'm going fishing, and standing on the shore, not even touching the water, and say, I'm going to catch some fish, I'm going to catch some fish. Years <laughs> are gone, and you did not convert one fellow. Hello? Hello. Is that right? Yep. Where do you go fishing? Deep sea. Is there a risk? Oh yeah. Is it uncomfortable? Oh yeah. Is it going to take a lot of energy? Oh yeah. Is it going to cost you? Oh yeah. But will you get a fish? What happens to a person who sits in a bathtub and going fishing? <laughs> he gets a soap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So did God see Moses' response? Yes. yes. As you are sitting there, is God seeing your response? Yes. yes. So your choosing is depending on God or your response? Your response. Response. So if you are saying, I feel so shy, you just miss you. Mm. So can we go back? Yep. Is this clear? Yes. For the next four days? Yes. Yes. Only for four days? No, forever. Forever. So when you're reading the Bible at home, what is your response? When you're reading the Bible and you found some truth, you should be screaming and dancing. And when God sees that, He say, look at that. Wow. Now I can use that same person with the same thing and, and do the job. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So again, Mark chapter 11, verse 20. And Jesus 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith of God. Now it's going to give us an answer how to have faith of God. How many of you want to operate in the faith of God? Still the no. After explaining about Moses, Lord, please, how many of you want to operate in the faith of God? Some are still ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one lady put in both hands up. Now, do you think the Lord saw that? Surely. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty, they shall be filled. <laughs> How old is your hunger? <laughs> Come on, I'm asking you. Do you want to operate in the faith of God? Yes. Yes. Come on, man. How many of you want to operate in the faith of God? Yeah, man. Now I did not see one hand up. All lifted up. But two of us have your feet. Hallelujah. Okay, now, now, now. Lesson number one. Verse 23. For when I say to you, he said, truly, truly, very important thing I'm talking to you. That whosoever. Say that, whosoever. 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 Did he say the preacher? No. Whosoever. No, no, did he say only the preacher? No. Whosoever. Are you included? Yes. Yes. Only the fish? No. Whosoever. The nuns? No. The religious? No. The preacher. <laughs> <laughs> or is it everyone who believes in Jesus? 
everyone. So remember, Brahma, I'm going to call you to heal. You must first of all remember, Jesus said, what? Whosoever. Now, will the devil say, you're not included? Oh yeah, he'll surely say. Yes. His job is to give you guilt and condemnation. And your job is to say, it is written, Jesus said, whosoever, and therefore I am in that whosoever. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, whosoever shall what? Say. Say. Say or pray? Say. My Bible says say. What does your Bible say? Say. And what are you doing? Say. Praying. Now, now can you say say or pray? Say. say. So, what's the difference between say and pray? When you pray, you don't say. When you say, you're asking, when you say, you're commanding. My question to you is, do you pray or do you say? Honest answer. Say. Please give me honest answer. You're sitting in the church, don't get that. Say. Are you praying or say? Pray. pray. So did Jesus say pray or say? Say. Say. So you're not supposed to pray. Confusingly, I think you say, are you praying or saying? Praying. Pray. So Jesus said you should pray or say? Say. say. So now what are you doing? Praying. Say. So that means you are not saying? Yes. So now are you going to say? Yes. So we you pray? No. Say. In the days of his flesh, that means before his death, when he was in his body, when he had offered up prayers, so did Jesus offer up prayers? Yes. Yeah. He prayed prayers and supplication. So did he pray for himself? Yes. Did he pray for others? Yes. yes. And how did he pray? With strong cry and tears. Oh my God, I never knew that. So that means Jesus was praying at night with tears? Yeah. Was he crying loudly? Yes. Yeah. yes. And what was he praying? Hey, what was he praying? He was praying to his father, asking him to save him from death. Austin, you are looking at me with your neck stretched. <laughs> Did I read something from the Bible? Yeah. Yes. Yes. But is is he is he, he was he praying to be saved from death? Yes. No. Your no. eyebrows are going up and down. No. Not no. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's not angry. He's saying, "What are you talking?" 
Okay, you read it from your Bible. Come on. In the days of his flesh. In the days of his flesh, that is in his body. Jesus offered up prayers. Jesus offered up prayers and supplications. And supplications with loud cries. With loud cries and tears. And tears to the one who was able to save him from death. So was he praying to be saved from death? Yes. So was Satan trying his best to kill him? Yes. Was Jesus praying to God to save him? So when Jesus spoke to God, did he speak to God his word? Yes. yes. See, if you see the prophets, whenever they spoke to God, they spoke to God his word. Okay. So what Jesus speaking to God is word of protection. Yes. yes. Why did he ask for protection? Was Jesus God or man? God. Man. On earth. Yeah. He entered himself of glory. So did he need protection? Yes. yes. So did he pray to his father? Yes. yes. Was his father able to protect him? Yes. Yes, yeah, that's what he said. Yes. Then he was able to save him from death. Then yeah, okay. and he was heard. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Because of his reverent submission. So was Jesus all the time submitting to his father? Yes. So if he, if he was in submission, was he in agreement? Yes. yes. So did he develop with his father or did he agree with his father? I agree with his father. I agree with his father. Now, even though the father saved him from death, did the father save him from the death on the cross? No. No. So what was so special that God saved him from death every day but not on the cross? That was a mission. Why, 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 why should Jesus die on the cross? To redeem all the mankind. Because the cross was a symbol of the worst criminal. The punishment was the cross. So when Jesus hung on the cross and he was crucified, he actually took a place as a substitute to be on the cross. And when on the cross, the sinless blood was 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 shed the cross which was a curse now turned into a blessing for us amen amen are you, are you understanding amen yes mm. so even though he asked his father for protection he always asked him for protection of death to be saved from death but when it came to the cross he never prayed for protection of dying on the cross because that is what he came for now, if Jesus had to die in the shop, would he receive salvation? No. He has to die on the cross. And he has to die a torturous death because the punishment has to be paid in full. The penalty has to be paid in full. Why does the penalty need to be paid in full? Can somebody say, why does the penalty need to be paid in full? So why the penalty? Listen, Redeem. have you ever heard the word forgive? Yes. Hello, forgive? Yes. Yes. Hello, forgive? Yes. yes. Now what's the meaning of the word forgive? The word forgive means for the wrong that you have done, you owe me. You have to pay me back the damage that you have done for me. Okay? But when I choose to forgive you, I say the penalty that you have to pay to me, I cancel the penalty and I let you go free, is forgiveness. That's why when the king forgives the man with 10,000 talents, he cancels his debts. debts. If there is no cancellation of the debts, there is no forgiveness. So for your debts and my debts to be cancelled, the debts have to be paid by the person who forgives. I was preaching in Dubai and I said forgiveness is unfair. Well, the person who is doing the recording, he said, what's the topic? I said forgiveness is unfair. 
he, he, I, I sent him an, uh, on WhatsApp. So he called me and said, brother, you, you gave a wrong topic. I said, what? Forgiveness is unfair. I said, yeah, it's the right topic. He said, how do you say forgiveness is unfair? Because the fair would be that the servant who owed 10,000 talents was supposed to pay to the king. Correct? The king, when he forgave him, he cancelled the debt. So who paid his 10,000? The servant or the king? King. Was it justice? No. no. It's unfair. So also when Jesus is hung on the cross and he says, Father, forgive them, was it fair? No. According to justice, for the wrong done to him, we are supposed to be given more severe punishment. But when the person is saying, I forgive you, that means I am ready to cancel every penalty that you are supposed to pay me, I let you go free, is forgiveness. Amen. If the penalty is not paid, there is no forgiveness. Supposing a cop stops a person for breaking the law. And he says, please forgive me. And the cop says, okay, I'll let you go. And he lets the person go free. But according to the law, the penalty had to be paid. Now when he lets him go, it's not forgiveness. The cop has made a blunder. If he wants to let him go, then he should remove the money and pay on his behalf and then let him go. Yes. Are you understanding? So when he let him go, now the cop is under breaking the law. Are you following now? Yes. So whenever you say, I forgive, and there's no penalty paid, it's never a forgiveness. And when the penalty is paid, the reason the penalty is paid is because I, I want to restore that relationship with that person. So when the person is forgiving somebody, is he looking at what the person did or is he looking at the person? Person. person. But most of the time, what are we looking at? The person's action against you or the person? Person's action, action against you. Now, all you mamas, all you mamas, when the baby was born and the baby kept you the whole life, troubling you. Now you want to listen to the word. Nah, 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 nah. Okay. Now are you looking at his action or are you looking at him? him. If it was action, you would have given it. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you understanding? Yeah. So even though the action is irritating from the child, the mother is still hugging and saying, it's okay. I still want to love you. I still want to hug you. Even though you are irritating, that's called forgiveness and that's called love. That's why the wives are so willingly hugging their husband and letting him go and paying the penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why did I come on forgiveness? Praise God. Okay. But did it help you? Yes. Yes. So how did Jesus learn obedience? Look at the eight words. Though he was a son, he had learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. By the things which he suffered. So how did he learn obedience? When there is suffering or when there is no suffering? Suffering. So when there is suffering, are you excited or are you crying? Excited. Crying. <laughs> okay, okay, let me put it this way. I met one lady. And she had a problem in her health that she could run only a few meters. And she learned and she got an advertisement. She read an advertisement in the paper that there's a person who wants to teach how to run long distance. So just, she just for to see what it is, she picked up the phone and called up this person and said, uh, how does a person, how can a person be able to run a long race, a long distance? So he took her number and they spoke and then he said, and then, then he called her for, to come and meet him. And she did not go. So he instigated, he kept 
calling her and saying, listen, you have at least come once and then you can quit, but at least come and see. So when she went there, they were all, you know, all the sportsmen in their, all their jackets and all, and all uh, fit. And this lady was, you know, hardly running a little. So he said, don't worry about what you see. You have to only change your mind. And after three months, she said, brother, I can run 10 kilometers without any problem. And now he said, you have to go for 20 kilometers running. Hmm. What did he do? Change the mind. Change the thinking and began to teach her a way by which she said, even after 10 kilometers, I don't get tired. So yet Jesus also teaching us that we have been trained with our self-knowledge, but there is another training which is the word knowledge. And that word is saying, whosoever shall say. Now do we say, uh, go to my father and talk to him about your problem? Or did he say, talk to the problem? Talk to the problem. problem. So what's the first thing that you should learn to do? You must learn to speak to the problem. All this time, what were you doing? Pray about the problem. Hello. Talk and about. And you are also telling everybody, uh, keep my problem in prayer. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you ever heard in the Bible, uh, the sick people came to the disciples and the apostles and said, keep me in prayer, I'm sick in my body. Or did you find the apostles in Acts and all the others, they went and healed the sick or they prayed for the sick? Heal the sick. Hello? Heal. And what are we doing after 2009? Uh, 2019? Hello? Are we healing the sick or praying for the sick? Praying for the sick. So are we doing what the apostles did or are we doing what we want to do? Which one is easy? Heal the sick or uh, pray for the sick? Heal the sick. <laughs> pray for the sick. <laughs> Heal the sick. Keep your <laughs> so tonight, what are we going to do? Pray for the sick or heal the sick? Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Really? Yes. yes. Oh yeah. Praise God. God Praise bless God. So whosoever shall say to this mountain, what? <coughs> lift it up. We lift it up and we throw it into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but, but does not doubt in his heart, does not doubt in his heart, did he say, does not doubt in his heart or does not doubt in his mind? Does not doubt, doubt in, in his heart. What's the difference between doubting in the mind and doubting in the heart? Heart is... Heart means... Heart, is heart when, means heart, here. When you agree... And mind is here, here. Heart is when you agree with the word. Heart is when you agree with the word. And mind is... So in your heart, if you agree with the word, that's what Jesus is saying. Very good. It's after listening well, to your videos. Now, for example, for example, I give you the example of 10 minus 7 is 3. And 10 minus 7 is 7. If you doubt that tree, no problem. Yes. You must doubt that tree. But please don't doubt that 7 under. Yes. yes. Are you following? Yes. Yes. So that's why he says, do not doubt in your heart. heart. But shall believe what? What he said? Has come to pass. What he said? What did he say? Did he say above the mountain or to the mountain? To the mountain. Mm. So what he said when he believes that it shall come to pass, then he shall have whatever he says. He shall have whatever he says. Whatever he says. So if you go on telling your everybody, my husband is da 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 da. So what will you have? That. Da, 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 da. My husband is all the time drinking. Da, 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 da. My husband is. My children. Yes. My, my boss. My job. Now, my question to you is do you speak what you see? Yeah. So, what will you get? What do you, what do you see? What do you speak? So, do you speak what you don't desire? No. Now, your problem is something that you don't desire. So most of the time, are you talking about your problem to one another? Yes. Mm. Do you have a good 
care a pity party where each one is sharing their problem. <laughs> yes. So when you are talking about your problem to one another and having good discussion, what will you get? What you say? So from now on, are you supposed to say what you desire or what you don't desire? What you desire. What you desire. And let me give you an example. The prophet Joel, God said, tell my people, let the weak say, I'm strong. Yes. Let the weak say, I'm, I'm strong. strong. Now, did he say, let the weak think he's strong? No. Did he say, let the weak come to me? God is saying, oh, let all the weak come to me. Let them kneel down, lift their hand and pray to me. Then I will make them strong. No. No. He says, when you are weak and you know you're weak, open your mouth and say, I'm strong. Now, why do you open your mouth and say you're strong? Because when you say you're strong, he will make you strong. Amen. Because you shall have... What you, what you say. What you say. What you say. So let the poor say... I am rich. I am rich. Let the sick say... I am I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> what? Healed. And what are you saying? Let the poor say... I am blessed. And what are you saying? Somebody has put a curse on me. You shall have whatever you say. Have you ever heard somebody say, you know that people have done some witchcraft on me. So is the witchcraft power bigger or Jesus is power bigger? Jesus is power bigger. But now if you say there is somebody who has done witchcraft on you, now have you allowed the spirit of witchcraft to work on you? Yes. Because you shall have what you say. So if you are saying nobody loves me, you shall have what you say. My mother-in-law hates me. You shall have what you say. My sister-in-law. You shall have <laughs> what you say. Are you understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, are we saying the faith of God? Are we saying the fear of the death? Fear. Fear. So if you are operating on a reverse gear and saying Psalm 91 and saying my car is going to go in front, it's a spiritual law. Will it go in front or will it hit the wall? wall? So now when it hit the wall, you call up the company and say your car is no good. <laughs> is the car is no good or the driver is no good? So the manufacturer who manufactured you, is he saying there's a problem in you or your working system is wrong? Working system. So if the working system is wrong, can we set the system right? Yes. yes. So is there something wrong in you, wrong with you or wrong in you? Wrong in you. Wrong in you. So can we set it right? Yes. yes. So when we set it right, can it bring the right manifestation? Yes. yes. My sister, one, two, and three. Don't look at it. You know I'm pointing my finger to you with a short hair. Mm -hmm. Do you have any pain in your body? Please come. How many times did you pray to God for the healing? No, come, come. I have a question. <laughs> How many times did you pray to God for your healing? No, just before I came, I just had a pain. I just said, thank you, man. It's still there. I was reducing it. Huh? I was asking the evil to go. You were asking the evil to please go? Okay. Did it go? Let it. So shall we please say it together? Close your eyes and say this, Lord Jesus, thank you for teaching me how to kill the it, this it on my shoulder has been troubling me all the time. Now I am talking to this it, 
the spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus, I bind you, I curse you, and I cast you out of my body. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I said it, I believe it, and you say it. I shall have whatever I say. So, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I say, I say, all my bones are aligned, all my bones are aligned, all my nerves are aligned, all my nerves are aligned, the muscles, muscles, tendons, tendons, ligaments, ligaments, are all aligned, are all aligned, and I'm set free, and I'm set free. All the pain is left my body, all the pain is left my body, and I'm completely healed, and I'm completely healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, <coughs> for teaching me this truth and setting me free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Now lift your hands and turn around. No pain. Why are you crying? I can understand when a person has got pain, they cry. But I don't know <coughs> when the pain goes, people cry. You know why I cry? Because you can hear him talk to you. He loves you. Have you met before? You are sitting there and he said, Call her. But she is doing exactly what you are teaching. Did I touch you? Did he speak to the eight? Yes. Did he speak to the eight? Did you feel it? Yes. Was it interesting? Yes. Was it good? So why did I? The tears are coming. You know why the tears are coming? Because he loves you. And you, and these tears are not the tears of sorrow. These tears are coming from the spirit. Because this, when you spoke to the kid, not only that went, but many other things went out. And the Lord just cleaned him up. Now do you want to kill the kid of uh, somebody else? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's a chap, I like that. Uh, can I get somebody who has got a problem in the bone? Okay, somebody with vertigo. Vertigo? Fantastic, you got it. That's it, huh? Leave it. Thanks. Point of being there. Point of being there. Thanks. I, I, I'm sorry to say, I forgot to say, you are wrong. Now my question to you is, don't you want God to be glorified? So when you get healed, the person who is watching on the screen, on YouTube, is also getting healed at this very moment. Because faith is contagious. Amen. Now you got what you for how many years? One year. One year. So you get into the very good arm without paying money. Yeah, this happened once, but it could happen anytime again. Yeah. yeah. So are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, please, can you come here? I cannot shoot to you, and you do the same. Okay? Will you do? Yes. See. You hold his head, her head, and say, No, I'm not you. She's going to kill you. You only want to demonstrate. Okay. okay. I'm going to demonstrate on him. He doesn't have what he goes. But he do the same. In the name of Jesus, I speak to this word. You get out of her now in Jesus' name. Now, by the time you do that, see, she's already in fear. Because she should go round and round. But you know what? What is what you go? What you go is nothing but imbalance of the fluid. So when you are shaking in the name of Jesus, whatever is imbalanced will be made balanced. Amen. And that should be your confidence. So are you going to kill it? Hold on. Can you take off the specs? Otherwise she might grip it so tight that the specs might break. So are you so you're ready? Yes. Close your eyes and say, close your eyes and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for teaching me how to kill the it. This word ego, I'm going to kill it now. In the name of Jesus, God, 
In the name of Jesus, I'm talking to this word ego. Get out of the body right now. In the name of Jesus, my dear sister, you are set free. Come on, set free. Up and down as well. Up and down. Up and down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. The balancing has come. And the sister is set free. And the sister is set free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, look down. No, no. Down. Anything happening? Anything happening? No. No. Look up. Anything happening? Look this side. That side. This side. That side. Come on, fast, fast, fast. Anything happening? Turn up. Anything happening? Finish. Congratulations. Do you feel ready? Yes. Okay. Now I want somebody. You want to give more? It gives others a chance. <laughs> I know, I know, no, no, you can go. I know when, when, when you start killing the hit, you are saying, this is so easy, man. I can do it every day. Hallelujah. Okay, I want somebody who has got slip this, a this, joint pain, something connected to the bones. Yeah, come, come, come. Who wants to kill it? Not you, <laughs> give somebody a chance. Are you a killer before this? No. Do you, you, do you play over people? I want a person who is not killing. Okay, okay. When you play, do you get 100 or 100? No. Most of the time. So I don't want uh, the person who was already getting the points. Do you play over people? Sister, not the one lady who stood up in said I don't want I want somebody who has never prayed about anybody. Come, come. What's the use of calling professional people? Yes. Call those who have never killed. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, what's your problem? That's right. On your shoulder? And for how many years? Many years in sleeping, 19 years. <laughs> Not 19. Okay, how many years? 10 years. Joy, you are a facial therapist. There is a case. Can you come? But don't touch her, okay? You're not taking this case. Okay. Oh. She's saying she has got a clients for the last 10 years. Uh, she has got problem in her shoulders, problem in her back, and where is the knees as well? Toes, fingers, So what is the reason why she has got this pain? Just because the time comes with the time get back. No, what is the reason? Regeneration. Of what? So now we know where to attack. Okay, so don't talk to the heart. Because when the car, see this, if the car is going to puncture, you don't open the engine. Yeah. You go to for the time. That's why I have to call him to ask him if a person has got a thyroid problem, then you want to talk to the bones and the cartilages. So if the cartilages can be repaired, that means the pain has to go. Is that right, John? So now you are going to talk to God and pray. See, when you pray, you talk to God. So you are going to pray to God with this authority for the cartilages to be recreated and at the same time you are going to speak to the arthritis to get out. So there are two ways, two things to be done. Are you ready? Right? So others will say as the cartilages get out, stop paying me this is more. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> She acted like a <laughs> No, the way you made I don't know. Thank you so much.
I bind you. I bind you. I curse you. I curse you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. And I cast you out. And I cast you out of this body. Of this body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I've spoken to this mountain. I've spoken to this mountain. And I do not doubt in my heart. And I do not doubt in my heart. I believe. I believe what I said, what I said shall come to pass. Shall come to pass. And I shall have and I shall have whatever I say. Whatever I say. So, so in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus I speak to all the bones. I speak to all the bones. The joints. The joints. The ligaments, the ligaments, the tendons, the tendons, the nerves, the nerves, the muscles, the muscles, the cartilage, the cartilage. Be alive. Be alive now. Be recreated now. Be recreated now. Lord, by the power of your spirit. Lord, by the power of your spirit. Lord, recreate. Lord, recreate. And make the cartridges new. And make the cartridges new. Completely new. Completely new. Right now. Right now. By the power of your Holy Spirit. By the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord. I thank, I thank you, Lord, Lord, for this created miracle. For this created miracle. miracle. And she is completely healed. And, and she is completely healed. healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. By your wounds. By, by your wounds. She is completely set free. She is completely, completely set free. All the pain is gone. All, All the pain is, is gone. gone. Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Your bones were out of joint. Your bones were out of joint. By that pain. By, by that pain. Her joints. Her joints. Are completely healed. Lubricated. Lubricated. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For this great miracle. For this great miracle. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. I start doing this and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I start doing this. It's all wrong. It's all mine. Yes, now everything is gone. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God.
And right now, your love is flowing deep down in your heart. And all the bad memories, painful memories, are leaving them completely and giving them the power to forgive. I do not know who they are, Lord, but it is you who is speaking these words to them. That you, just as you feel the brightest and recreated brand new cartridges, Lord, with the same power, you have given them the power to forgive and cancel every penalty that people had harmed them. And with the forgiveness that they have received, Why aren't they Lord, from their heart is coming words, I forgive this person in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that this is the greatest healing. And this forgiveness cannot come with us, but only by faith. Thank you. And those watching right now, Lord, that same anointing to forgive flows into that person who's listening right now. And whatever has happened, every hindrance that is blocking them from forgiving, right now, the stronghold of the enemy is destroyed. I rebuke that spirit of unforgiveness. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit of unforgiveness. Get out now of this person in the name of Jesus. And Lord, your anointing of love, your anointing of forgiveness is flowing and flowing and flowing, bringing recovery and restoration and healing in this person's life. In Jesus' name. Keep holding, sister. Don't read. Great miracle is happening back home. Great miracle is happening back home. Skin came out. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't leave her. Don't leave her. Just keep holding. And let the love of God touch every member of the family. Every member of the family. Lord, today is a miracle day. You said, believe in the Lord Jesus, you and the household. Shall we see? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you know each other? Yeah. But can I ask you? You must have hugged so many people. But this this hug was a gift. This hug comes by faith. So many sitting here, they also got healed. Amen. 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 I don't think I'm a killer. So now she's become a killer. You have become a killer. We are all killers of it. Yes. It was torturing us. Now we have learned how to torture it and destroy it completely from the root. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I have some more? Come on. Those who here, come on. There's somebody who lifted your hand up. Come on, please come. Please come. Please come. Now, what, what problem do you have? What's your, what, what are you talking about? I have a letter to my client and I have a client. So it's blurred. Yeah. Somebody else, come on, come on. Anybody else? Why you have to push up? <laughs> now who is he? And he's pushing you. <laughs> yeah, what happened to you? Uh, I don't do it. I can't do that. What's that? What? Come here, 
I made it big already. I can turn it. Yeah. Now is that coming? Yes. Yeah. You don't want to miss any bar. And listen, you will have a brand new sight. You know, I was in, I was in Adelaide, and there was this girl. You watched the video. You saw it. So do you think God is partial? If you did it there, will you do it here? Yes, amen. So you have come all the way to where? Right, yeah, you have come all the way to where? Okay, those who do not know, this girl, her cornea had been damaged like iron. When it is rusted, it leaves back pit marks. When it is rusted, it leaves pit marks. So her cornea had been 
uh, you know, there were holes on the cover there, and because of which there were black spots. And I told her, you know, when, they, when she said that, I was so excited and I said, wow, I can get to kill a big fellow. Isn't it good? Yes. So I called somebody and this lady came and spoke to her and, and, and she finished the scriptures and I said, look into your hand. And as she looked, she began to cry. I said, what happened? She said, I cannot see that black spot anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm completely healed. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Uh, praise the Lord. So you got a frozen shoulder. What's your problem? I have growing pain. Pain in your head. Your eyes? Oh, right eye. <laughs> right eye, please God. And brother, okay, please stand. Let's close your eyes. Hold hands, hold hands. Close your eyes. The person who is praying will pray, and the person who is receiving, close your eyes and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. There's going to be an exchange that is going to take place and we are only going to speak scriptures. Say this, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I thank you, I praise you for teaching me the truth. For teaching me the truth. Lord, Lord, you cursed the fig tree, you cursed the fig tree and I died from the root. And I died from the root. And you said to your disciples, and you said to your disciples have faith of God. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be lifted up and be thrown into the sea. And be thrown into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart. And does not doubt in his heart. But believes what he says. What he says shall come to pass. Shall come to pass. He shall have, he shall have whatever, he says. whatever he says. I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for touching this person in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm talking to the spirit of infirmity. I'm talking to the spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I curse you. I curse you. Just like Jesus cursed the fig tree. Just like Jesus cursed the fig tree. I bind you. I bind you. And I cast you out of this body. And I cast you out of this body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord. Lord. Let your love flow into this person. Let your love flow into this person. Your healing power. Your healing power. Flows into this person. Flows into this person. Right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, healing this person, healing this person, completely, completely, every organ, every organ, every tissue, every tissue, receives, receives the power of God, the power of God, recreating, recreating, reconstructing, reconstructing all these organs, all these organs, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. All the bones are alive. All the bones are alive. The cartilages, the cartilages, ligaments, ligaments, tendons, tendons, nerves, nerves, muscles, muscles. All recreated. All recreated. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. That you are anointing. That you are anointing. Has set them free. Has set them free. Completely free. Completely free. Completely free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For teaching us the truth. For teaching us the truth. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, sister, open your eyes. Is it blood now? Most of it is gone. Mm -hmm. Not too bad, but um, still a bit blurry. A little bit. Most of it is clear. Still blurry. Yeah, the blur is there. From one to ten, how much is it clear? It's hard to say. A portion of it that's just blurry. Okay, we are going to going to pray again. What about you? Okay. Clear. 
Good. Legs. Good. Okay. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Check it out now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. After how long? How many years you were suffering? Sorry? How many years did you suffer? A couple of months. Praise God. Now you check your waist, sister. Is there any pain? No pain now. Praise God. Uh, brother, you will only understand when you go for a check. Okay. Did you have any pain in your body? No. Praise God. Now, I'll do the finish. Is that okay? Yeah, take all your sins. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I touch your eyes, I speak. Look by the power of your precious blood, wash his eyes like an ass came and spoke to Saul and said, When the Saul received your sight, in the name of Jesus. And when he said this words, Lord, the scales fell off his eyes, and he was completely healed. In the same way, right now the scales fall off of his eyes, and the eyes are clenched, and all the blurredness is gone, and the vision is restored. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, get
Because if we only uh, have the theory without writing the notes, a law will miss the mark. So can you write down some notes of all, all the dictionary? And we are going to study tomorrow as well. Hallelujah. Okay, and, and, and because in 15 minutes I won't be able to complete. How what is the law of faith? A God and faith. Questions you speak. Now you speak to the mountain or speak to God? Speak, speak to, to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Speaking, then what you spoke, you believe. Yes. Believe in the mind or believe in the heart? Believe in the heart. heart. So heart. what are the first two steps? Speak. speak. Now speaking to the problem or about the problem? To, to the problem. To. Second step? Believe, believe in, the in your heart. What? what whatever you whatever you the word of God has said. Three. Receiving. Verse 24 says, verse 24 says, whatsoever you desire when you pray, first believe that you have received it. First believe. First believe that you have received it. And then you shall have it. So speaking, believing, believing, receiving, receiving. again, speaking, speaking believing, believing, receiving, again, speaking, speaking believing, believing, receiving. Now one thing that will destroy or stop the, the power of faith of God is unforgiveness. That's why Jesus in the verse 25 said, and when you stand, forgive. Because if you do not forgive, your father in heaven will not forgive. Forgive. So, how does a person operate in the faith of God? He speaks the word believes. to the problem, he believes the word, he receives the word, and he forgives anybody and everybody who comes against him. So, if I have got bitterness or unforgiveness, now will the law of faith work? No. no. Is that clear? Yes. So do I need to walk in love? Yes. yes. So do I need to forgive somebody else's penalty? Yes. So is it fair? Unfair. unfair. It is unfair. So you might go to God and say, how can I forgive? It's unfair. And the Lord says the same. It is unfair for my part as well. Because you don't deserve forgiveness as well. But I cancel all the penalty that was against you. I cancel hell for you. And you deserve hell. And I give you hell. It was it fair? No. Hey, come on, was it fair? No. No, unfair. So what you have received from God, which is unfair, in the same way you got to give it the forgiveness and love, which is unfair. Hallelujah. Yes. Is that clear? Yeah. Yes. So if the penalty is not cancelled, it's not forgiven. And if the penalty is cancelled, it's like a judge who has put the hammer down and said, case dismissed. And once the case is dismissed, do you scratch that case again? No. no. Have you ever heard, have you ever, I don't know whether this happens, when the husband and the wife, they get angry, they scratch 19, 20, 1980, something happened. Your mother. <laughs> <laughs> now what's that? Forgiven? Or still it, the file is open? File is open. And as long as the file is open, can the faith of God work? No. No. So what is the devil going to do? Instigate you to open the file. Mm. And what are you going to say? I don't even remember because it's forgotten. Forgiven. Mm. Does God remember your sins? No. no. Why not? Because when it's forgiven, the case is closed. There is no more file against you. No more document against you. Clear? Clear. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. Right What did you write last? I have what I believe in my heart and I say, Mark 11, 22 to 24. Can you finish that? Yes. Yes. Said forgiveness is unfair. That was the last. That law, that law, right, that law works with faith. That law works with faith and it works with fear. Mm. And it works with fear. Now, can a person believe in his heart? The word of God? Yes. Yes. Can a person believe something contradictory to the word of God? Yes. 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 So when he speaks, the law of faith works. When he speaks, the law of fear also works. But they are both in 
opposite direction. Opposite, opposite direction. direction. But will they work? Yes. Yes. Right up next. Fear is twisted faith. Fear is twisted faith. For example, fear is faith in the ability. Fear is faith in the ability of a dangerous animal. Of a dangerous animal to do you harm. Do you harm? What we know as fear, what we know as fear was originally, was originally Adam's faith. Was originally Adam's faith and it got twisted and it got twisted 180 degree 180 degree in the opposite direction in the opposite direction now had God given Adam everything yes. and he blessed him Yes. Yes. So the law of faith was in action. Now, how did the law of faith get twisted? Just as God gave Adam words and Adam believed and agreed, the law of faith got activated. Satan came into the garden and gave him words, gave him information. And these words and this information was opposite to what God said. Now did Adam believe it completely? Yes. So now he shifted from believing God's word to Satan given word. So what looked like faith was actually fear. So please understand, uh, when does a spirit of fear get activated in a person? The moment the person receives information or knowledge that contradicts God's word, the spirit of fear has already started his work. The moment the person processes, opens his mouth and speaks it, that spirit of fear is in action. What does the spirit of fear do? Steal, kill, destroy. Every day do we receive information? Yes. yes. Knowledge? Yes. yes. From the Bible or from the world? world. No, the world. And if I am receiving and downloading this information, now will my faith be the faith of God or the twisted faith? Twisted faith. Twisted faith. And that twisted faith is what? Fear. And when I am operating on that faith, the result is destruction. Is that clear? Yes. How about? So is it a fluke game? No. Is it a bingo game? No. No. It's a chess game. It's a table tennis. It's a badminton. Why? The devil does his job. I don't respond according to his knowledge. I respond according to the Bible knowledge. Does it fix up the problem? Yes. yes. Did we see some problems getting fixed up? Yes. yes. I heard somebody say, oh my God. Why do you think she must have said, oh my God? Because she is in pain for 10 years. And all of a sudden she finds everything is lubricated, all oil, no more joint pain. Everything is, which was stiff is so smooth. And now did you see her twisting? I wonder how this Easter will be. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, much of what surrounds us today, much of what surrounds us today, is a product, much of what surrounds us today is a product of what I have been saying. 
much of what is surrounded today is the product of what I have been saying. I remember one person, you know, when we were, I was preaching, this person said, Oh my God, now I realize why I was doing this. In Bombay, we play cricket, okay, by the roadside. And the ball goes in the drainage. Very common. Yes, 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 so yes, 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 yes. Okay, once the ball goes inside, will we leave the ball or will we try to remove the ball? Remove the ball. Now, there was this one person, one boy, that he loved to get into the drainage. <laughs> and then every time the ball would go, they would fall in. And he would not only go and get the ball, he would remain there and enjoy that. And he said, I don't know why I was attracted to it. And then when he came to know about the power of words, he, the Holy Spirit reminded him that his father would always call the goal. Means pig. You pig. And he heard it so many times that he began to behave like a pig. Mm. And then he said, Brother, I realized, but it, I, my father did not do it purposely, ignorantly that they were used to, to say that. And I became one like that. So today I understand and I choose to forgive my father and I am also set free. So when you tell your children, you're stupid, you're good for nothing, what happens? It starts acting. It starts acting in them, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, I can't be saved. I can't be saved without faith. I can't be saved without faith. Efficient to it, Brother Francis. Second, I can't please God without faith. I can't please God without faith. Hebrews 11 6. Hebrews 11 6. The first one, I can't be saved without faith. Efficient to it. I'm so sorry. Efficient to eat. I can't walk the Christian walk. I can't walk the Christian walk without faith. I can't walk the Christian walk without faith. 2 Corinthians 5 7. 2 Corinthians 5 7. It is by faith we understand. It is by faith we understand that God created the heavens and the earth. It is by faith we understand that God created the heavens and the earth. Hebrews 11, 3. Praise God. So today the time is up. We will continue tomorrow. Brother Francis, come and say the closing prayer. Can we all arise, please? So we'll let us close our eyes and let us reflect on all the teachings that we have gone through, remembering that the Lord has told us in Matthew 18, 20, when two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. Lord, we believe with our hearts that you were there in our midst. It was you who was giving us this teaching using Brother Johnson. Thank you, Lord, for giving us Brother Johnson who made this teaching so clear, so simple, and so easy to understand that it has not only transformed our minds, but our hearts have been touched. And we have started believing that you have the mighty power to heal 
and to change our lives. Yes, Lord, we experience this mighty healing from your hands because we believed. We believed from our hearts that you came and did this powerful operation, this powerful healing in our lives. Lord, we asked and you have given it to us because in Matthew 7, 7, in the word of God, you have told us, yes, you ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Yes, Lord, we have received and we have found you. We are going with you and with you we are taking this word so that we can light up the hearts of those people who are seeking and searching you. You've again said, O oh Lord Jesus, give and it will be given unto you. Yes, Lord, this love that we have received, we are going to share it and we are going to give it not only to our family and to our friends, but in our workplaces and to all those people who have no one to love. We thank you for your divine presence. We thank you for your glorification of your son Jesus by his manifestation in us this evening. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that we have received. And we are now in a position to give these blessings and complete your mission for which you have sent us into this world. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone and God bless you all. We'll see you all tomorrow evening.